Okay, Shalom, Shalom, my answer, brother Kadash, back with another one. We give our praises to you. How about Hashem? You have a shy about Hashem or Kadash. Um, I'm gonna name this one Do Not Consent and Tuggle, you know, and that goes along with the MOTB, that goes along with everything that's about to happen. This is a warning don't consent and Tuggle. This is real, man. Take, I mean, you got to take this warning for what it is, you know, because we set up as watchmen. All hell about to break loose, man. Shit is about to be bad. And people, I mean, I know people don't really understand because people don't study and people ain't really looking into it and people ain't really caring because people want to kind of put that off to the side. They don't want to think about the bad things. Just like it says in the Bible, they want the sweet things, but they don't want to really think about the bitter things. They don't want that bitterness in their belly. But when these famines come, man, when you ain't got power, when you ain't got water, can't wash your ass, right? A lot of people don't have skills to know how to dig a hole to put their waste in. You know, that's unclean. Matter of fact, the whole city, you ain't you you may not even have your waste plant working. So the whole city is going to be contaminated when you don't have power, when there's no lights on. You know, people don't really understand how dark it really is when you ain't got no street lights on, how dark it is. Right? You like I said, we ain't got no water, you ain't got no electricity, you ain't running no air conditioning. When, when it's 90 and 100 degrees out and you sitting in your house baking, right? So Esau is bringing these things in because these things are being man, man created. And they're bringing, they're doing these things and they're creating these things and they're creating these famines to get you to consent. And the main thing they're trying to get you to consent into is their will and, and, and that MOTB, was, which is coming, which is the mark in the hand that you're going to use in order to buy or sell. So they're creating these things. So that's why I'm trying to send the message out there is just don't consent. There's hope at the end, but you have to believe. The Lord will be there for you, but you have to believe if you're an Israelite. You have to believe, man. Just don't consent because a lot of people are going to give up. A lot of people are on, on the fence. They're going to give up quick. And then a lot of people will say, look, I ain't consent. I ain't getting no MOTB. I ain't fucking with them. But when that hell, when they feel that pain, when they feel that fire, when, we, when the elect is being tried through the gold, a lot of brothers going to fold. There's going to be a great falling away. The Bible talks about a great falling away. It's going to be a great falling away because the heat going to get turned up, you know, and it's going to cause a lot of people to, to, um, well, like we like to say, fold and consent. They're going to fold and consent into them. No, let's get straight into the Bible. This is second address, chapter 16. This ain't going to be that long. We're going to start at verse 68. It says, for behold. The burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered into idols. Right? So, and that's another thing you're going to see. You're going to see purge in the street, and you're going to see martial law. And you're going to see people being led out their homes into buses and being drove down to the nearest FEMA camp. And you're going to see people willingly going to the uh, nearest FEMA camp. Because when they ain't got food in their house, they ain't got energy, they ain't got power. Right? They're going to want to go down to the FEMA camp in order to get help, to get your medicine, to get your food, right? And one of the requirements is going to be there is going to be you taking that MOTB. <laughs> and that's going to cause people to consent. You know, you're going to have a big push of people saying, look, let's go down and get help. But the elect going to know, no, nah, we ain't going to go fuck with them people because you got to know who your enemy is. And I'm going to get to that, too. It says, um... And they're going to take people and put people in prisons, right? It says, and they that consent to them should be had a derision and a reproach and trodden under foot. So if you do consent to them, it may seem like it's going to better your life or help you from the hell that's about to be brought on earth for a time period. But really at the end, they're going to really, it's really only going to hurt you because two things, the Lord going to get you for doing it. And then the second thing is, is just like the traders back in the day. With the Native Americans that traded on their tribes, what happened when Esau was done using them? He discarded them. And then they had to kind of go back with shame what they had down for trading and selling out their own people. And Esau really just used them. And then after he was done with them, he just got rid of them. That's how it worked, man. Now, uh, let's keep going. It says, for there should be in every place and in on the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Because they're going to come down upon the Israelites, man, hard. And they're going to come down upon the elect, the prophets, us. Because it tells you in Matthew 24, you should be hated of all nations for my namesake. 
So, but then at Jeremiah 30, it tells you there's going to be a thing called Jacob's trouble. So they're going to come down on the whole nation of Israel because really they need us in order to complete their whole new world order, the image of the beast. They need us to be their slaves. But when we not going alone or things are getting harder for them because the Lord is bringing the judgments on them, they can't do nothing to the Lord. So guess who they're going to turn that anger on? They're going to turn it on the Israelites and they're going to say, look, man. We can't afford to pay y'all to do jobs no more. We got to just take y'all back in slavery. And then that's when all hell's going to break loose, man. And you see it coming. You see it coming quick, you know. You see it coming with the gas prices rising up, people losing jobs left and right, different famines, different pesticides coming. You see it coming, man. You better, this is the warning right here. We're giving you warning because there's going to be a thing, another thing that's going to happen in the earth that's called the famine of the word. The Lord going to take us from making these videos from going out on the highways and byways and teaching you the truth and giving you the warning. We set up as watchmen, Ezekiel 33, for only a time period. So you got to get it right now, man. Why you think we you think we just doing this because for no reason? We just making videos, going into the Bible? No, because the Lord put it in our spirit to give you this warning. This is real shit, man. This is real spiel. Get it right now. If you don't, then, hey, shit, you're going to be caught out there. Off guard. You ain't going to know what's happening. Then you're going to die. It says... In Amos chapter 8, right? Then you they're gonna be running to and fro to try to get the truth, but it's gonna be a famine of the word. Then you're gonna be, man, what was they saying? They said this was gonna happen. What does this mean? What they said, what's the Lord's name? But like it says in Matthew 25, the Lord gonna shut the door on them and say, I do not know, know thee. See how it all goes together? That's how you know it's the truth, man. Now, um, th there should be a great insurrection on those that fear the Lord, all right? So now I'm gonna give you the warning right here. Not to consent into them and not to trust your enemy. This is key, a key theasticus. Because if you trust your enemy, if you consent into them, you, you put trust in them. If you take the MOTB, you put trust in them in a system. Right? Um, this is a key theasticus in the uh, Apocrypha, chapter 12. Right? Um, verse, where do we start at? Um, verse 10. Never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusts. So it's his wickedness. So he may do some things for you. He might give you some food. He might let you come down to the FEMA camp, give you shelter where they have energy, you know, but it's all the setup, right? It says, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shall be into him as if thou has wiped a looking glass and thou shall know that his rust has not all been together wiped away. So he might be nice to you to get to get y'all to come down to the FEMA camp so all hell break loose, right? But that rust is still there. You best believe there's something behind the scene. You see, you always see it in the Purge movies. They all go down to a shelter to get help, but the leaders of it is setting them up really pretty much to the point where they all about to be slaughtered. Or they in there just oppressing them, raping them, sticking needles in them, testing them. You're like, damn, they doing this to them? Yeah, because they consented to their enemy and they didn't even know because they should have followed the Bible where it says never trust that thy enemy. Right? So we're gonna give you the warning right here. It says, um, set him not by thee, lest when he has overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. So how are we supposed to be joining it to them? All at church with them, telling them that they could be one with us. Telling them that they could be all nations could be saved with us. This saying set them not by us. Right? It says, um, he would um lest he seek to take thy seat. And what did they do? And they came over here with the Native Americans. They the Native Americans trusted their enemy and they got set up, and then Esau took their seat. And now Esau today is known as the Americans. See how it worked? <laughs> That's the proof. It says, uh, let me I keep losing my place. And and thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? Or any such as come nigh the wild beast. So who's going to pity a charmer? If you don't take heed to this, why you could get it right now before the famine of the word. And you trust in them. When you get bit by them, who's going to have pity on you? Lord ain't going to have pity on you. Hey, you should have listened. Right? It says, verse 14. So who? So one that goeth into a sinner is defiled with him. And his sins, who would pity? Be not unevenly yoked, right? Um, for a while, 
he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaketh uh, sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagined how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find um but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Right? Now, think about it. They gonna come with the MOTB, they're gonna make it sound sweet. All the athletes and the entertainers, the rappers, the singers, the movie stars gonna get it. They're going to tell you that you should get it. It's going to make your life better. It's going to make American life better. It's going to save America from the famines and everything that's coming, which is really what they're creating it for. So they could push you into getting it. The all hell breaking loose is going to bring the economy back. People are going to be able to work and get money again. Right. But the whole time it's a setup, right? They're going to speak sweetly with their lips, but they really think of a way to overthrow you. And every time they come with one of these false flag events, what happened? They take more and more power from the people. They say, look, we're going to give you this. This is going to make your life better. But in exchange, without even you knowing, they really taking your power and your freedom away. So now you can't fly without a passport. Now you can't do this. Now you can't do that without getting special licensing. You know, you can't go even open up a business. It got to be zoned. <laughs> you got to get licensed. You see, it used to not be this way. If you want to sell cars to a public, right? Salaki, sorry. If you want to sell cars to a public, you got to get licensed to do it. I, I can't just go buy cars and sell them. You got to get licensed. They want to regulate it. They gotta, you got to pay taxes on that shit, man. It says he will not be satisfied with blood. And we know that this go back to Esau because of the precepts. That's what helped us break down the Bible. Now, this is, um, let me see. What is that? Was that in Ezekiel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the, off the top of the head, Salaki. Off the top of the head. Um, Ezekiel. Let me see. Because we're going off the top of the head. Ezekiel uh, 35. I mean, yeah, Ezekiel 35. Straight to the point. Verse 4. I will lay the city's waste and um, thou shall be de uh, destitute, And thou shall know that I am the Lord, right? Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Now, follow me here. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to break this down so perfect for you. Watch this. Right? It says... Because thou hast shed the uh, blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in their time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee into blood and blood shall pursue thee since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Right. And this blood is going to pursue them. Right. Because just like it said, when we is in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, don't trust your enemy because he would not be satisfied with blood. And this is talking about the Edomites. Verse 7, thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passes out of um, him that returneth. Mount Seir is talking about this goes back to the Edomites. Now, let's pull this one. Because the Edomites aren't satisfied with blood. And... Who fits that bill? Who who on earth could you say, yeah, this has to be the people that's not satisfied with blood more than any other people on earth? Wouldn't it be the same people that took the Negroes into slavery during the whole transatlantic slave trade thing? That was a lot of blood spilled. That seemed like they wasn't satisfied with blood, right? Wouldn't it be, which happens to be the same people that did the whole genocide, rape, robber, and murder in slavery of the Native Americans? Which happens to be the same people that conquered the Aztecs. Which happens to be the same people that dropped atomic bombs on Japan. That killed millions of people in an instant. That sounds like a people that's not satisfied with blood. So who are the Edomites? See how it all goes together, man? Simple, right? Now, let's go here. I can get to it. I'm kind of going off from the lesson, but that's the spirit, you know, the spirit kind of guides you to where you're going. Obadiah chapter one, and it's going to say the same thing. Verse nine, and thy mighty man, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone out of Mount, um, out of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So it's talking about Esau, the Edomites, right? It says the Mount of Esau, which is the same thing as saying the people of Esau, which are the Edomites. It says, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame should cover thee, and thou shall be cut off forever. Because that violence, like it said in Ezekiel chapter 35. 
that perpetual hatred. So they're going to be cut off by slaughter, the Edomites. So going back to the keys, yes, the chapter 12, don't trust them. And going back to um, 2 Ezra chapter 16, don't consent into them. Don't give them your trust by consenting into them. Which goes back to Revelation 13, don't take the MOTB. See how it all goes together, man? That's how you know it's the truth, right? Um, now I want to jump because we got another big problem, man. We got another big problem, y'all. Sorry about it. I should go live. Like, I ain't got enough followers and everything to go live yet. So like the channel and subscribe to the channel so I could go to live. So I could start interacting with y'all more, man. Because this would be great. Because I want to see some precepts, you know, being posted. I want to get people's opinion. I want to go back and forth. Let's do it. Right? Now, I want to answer questions and ask questions. You know? We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Right? But we got another, we got another big problem. Got yeah, another big problem, man. Right? Because the same way I'm giving you this truth right here, you have a opposing force that's telling you different, that's telling you to consent. Oh, yeah, amongst the Israelites. Because what it's saying in Romans 9, they are not all Israel that is that is of Israel. You have another opposing force, right? Um, I don't know, not right there. Not right there. Locking. Let me see. I gotta find this stuff. Right here, right here, right here. Right. You got another important for opposing force, even amongst our people. A lot of times they come call themselves Christians, Christian church, Catholic church, but they Israelites, they Negroes, Native Americans or Latinos, but they telling you to consent. They telling you to take the MOTB. Because basically they're telling you that the mark, the chip is not the MOTB. It's them saying that it's okay to take it. They telling you to be one people with the Edomites. They telling you all nations could be saved. And this is a big problem, man. And the Bible tells us about though, Because the way that they're doing those same spirits that's doing that today was the same spirits that was doing that back then. And it got us to where we're at today, which is slavery. <laughs> and captivity. Right? And wickedness. Right, so first Maccabees, right? Um, chapter one, verse eleven. It says, "In those days went out of Israel wicked men." So they really wicked. No matter how much we like them, no matter how much they do teach some truth, you got to keep the law, statutes, commandments. The blacks, the Negroes, or the um, uh, Israelites, but they telling you that you should be one with the other nations, which makes them wicked. It says, "Who persuaded many?" Saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. And they're trying to make a new covenant with Israel, the heathen. And this time it has something to do with the MOTB, the mark of the beast. They want you to take it. They want you to get into a new covenant with them. But you got to choose, like it says in Matthew chapter 6, you can't have two gods. You got to choose. You're going to follow the Lord or you're going to follow the man that's ruling the earth, which are the Edomites, which we clearly know who's ruling the earth. They call themselves Caucasians. That simple. Am I lying? Right? It says, um, they're around about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Remember earlier when I told you that people are going to willingly go down to the FEMA camps to get help? Because when all hell break loose, people are going to say, look, we're having much sorrow. Let's go down and get help from the military, from the National Guard, from Esau. Let's go get help from the Caucasians pretty much. Right. And that's what they're going to say. Since we departed from them, we had had much sorrow. They're going to they're going to tell people, go down there and take the MOTB. They're going to tell you to make a covenant with them. They're going to tell you to consent into them to get help. It says, so this device pleased the will. And this is going to be very pleasing to a lot of people because they're going to get that help, that temporary help that they need from what's coming. It says, then certain of the people were so forward. Then they're going to be so forward. Right. So forward they're in. Right. That they um that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen, where whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. And when you go down there, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna follow the ways, whatever they're doing at the FEMA camps, the uh, other nations. That's what you're gonna follow. You're not gonna follow the Lord, and that's why we're gonna be hated because we're gonna be telling you to do the exact opposite. Which is follow the Lord and don't be consented into them and don't make a covenant and don't be joined one into all the other nations. Be ye separate. Be holy. Right. Verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised 
and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. What does that sound like? That sounds like Mystery Babylon, which is America. Here we're doing mischief. We're sinning. Why? Because we're following the ways of the Lord. You're following Christmas. You're worshiping false gods. You're following Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving. And then you're celebrating this whole system on 4th of July, which is wicked. But you're not following the Lord. You're not being ye separate. And you're not being holy. That's a part of following the Lord is being holy and being separate from the other nations. You're saying that, look, we need to join to them and they could be saved with us and we could be one people with them in the kingdom. Basically, that's what you're saying, because if you say they could be saved, all they should be saved, then you will have to believe that they're going to be one people with the Israelites in the kingdom. Not going to happen. You can't change your seed, man. If you come from the seed of Esau, you can't change to Israelite. When has that ever happened? If you were Israelite, you can't change your seed to being an Edomite. You are what you are because you come from that seed, that bloodline. Right? Now, uh, let's jump down because we always jump down to um, verse uh, 9. Forty-one. Moreover, the king Antioch wrote to his whole kingdom, an Edomite, right, um, that all should be one people. What does that sound like? America. Everybody's equal. The American dream. Everybody's one people. Same thing today. That's what the Bible is here to give us these examples, to give us this knowledge and this wisdom, so we can see it when it happens, right? It says, and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. All the heathen around there agreed. So we, we want to follow. Um, they, there's a guy called Santa Claus. We're going to, um, you know, kind of praise him. Every year we're going to keep Christmas. All the heathen agree. And then guess what the niggas did? The Israelites. They agreed and they started doing the same thing. And then they, they worshiped the shit more than the Edomites do. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day, you see a whole bunch of niggas running around in green. Ain't got nothing to do with no Irish. They don't even know Irish people. <laughs> but they running around in green with beads on. You see? Right? It says, um, and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the king's co um, the commandments of the king. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath day. Like I just said, it's going to cause you to follow after them which is going to cause you to become a Gentile, which is going to cause you to sin against the Lord. Do not consent into them. What I'm going to say, salvation to the election, Lord.